This program is funded in part by Mass Humanities. These men, these adventurers, they're gathering more help as they're following the story. And they've all grown up on the water. What is that? What kind of man does that make? Doesn't think anything about going out on his own on a little boat as a kid. And they like to tell stories, eat well, laugh. And when they start something, they keep at it. These men, they get the job done. It was pure happenstance that we walked by the Green Dragon Tavern as we're just filming something. Yeah, this is uh, the old, some of the oldest streets, oldest blocks in Boston. And uh, Green Dragon Tavern, it was the, uh, as it says, the meeting house uh, for the Sons of Liberty. And the thing about the Green Dragon Tavern was it was in the same spot as the uh, uh, Masonic Temple that was there. So the Masons were uh, headquartered here, and John Kendrick was made a member of that. This Kendrick comes out of the war wealthy, with a real reputation, and he could, you know, at that point, um, you know, he could have been thinking about retiring. Um, you know, he had a bunch of kids, uh, two sons who were just coming of age themselves and needing to make their own reputations. But then we have Robert Haswell. Boston Harbor is crowded with rocky islands that today look mostly untouched. At the entrance, it's uh, George's Island. Robert Haswell was born there in 1768. His father was a British customs officer who married a local girl. Together, they raised a family in the nearby town of Hull. There would have been plenty of opportunity for the boy to accompany his father over to Gallup's Island for customs inspections for ships from all over the British Empire or into Boston itself. Just a short walk down to the water, take a boat in, Boston Harbor. Nice place for a kid to grow up. Well, there was an earth earthworks fort here in the Revolution. Yeah, and there were still signs of it in the 1930s. This idyllic life came to an end with the Revolution. A few months after Lexington and Concord, whaleboats manned by British Marines attempted to take Boston Light. On the hills overlooking Haswell's home, an American cannon scored a direct hit on a British whaleboat. In retreat, the Brits left one of their wounded with the Haswells. The Marine died. So Haswell's sister and his father buried the Marine here in their backyard. How would you like to end this sequence? With the jailing of the entire Haswell family, they're put under house arrest, they're sent to Hingham, and then further inland to Abington for two and a half years, and then they're finally brought uh, in exchange for a privateer captain in Nova Scotia and sent off to Hull, England. Uh, they live out the rest of the uh, war in poverty. Um, so they end up, the whole war, just completely destitute. They get, they're, they're exactly the opposite of Kendrick. I'll let you take that one. No, uh, no, no. You, 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 you're just better. You're, well, just, you're, you're, well, well, no. Interject then. Interject. You, okay. I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> yes. You're, you're just. You're the scholar. I'm not. I'm just okay. along for the ride. Yep. Yeah, your color. Resident. I play by play in your color. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll go with that. Robert Haswell was the son of a loyalist who lived in Hull. He is our narrator. He writes the log of the Columbia. It's the only first-hand account. At the Mass Archives, we found an entry for a deed dated in the summer of 1787 from Haswell's father for property in Hull. Welcome to the Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the super friends to come out. Right. So what is that you have, Andy? This is the um, Grant Tours Index uh, for all of Suffolk County. And so I looked under as well, 1787, July 27th, sold land in Hull to Daniel Souther. And I kind of looked through the deed, it takes a little while, but I didn't see any reference to Hull or anything along that. Well, that's just... You can look one other spot. We 
said it was 1700? 1787. Okay, so the same. From 1639 to 1779. Okay, so we go with, what was the name again? Oh, well. Hammond. <clears throat> Has me. There it is. That's it. That's the same page I've got. Daniel Souther, July 27, 1787. Book 160, page 247. Haswell was jailed during the Revolutionary War with the rest of his family, even though he was seven years old. Was made destitute by the whole Revolutionary War and sent into exile in England. But he comes back to be the third officer of the Columbia Expedition. At the time, his uncle, Captain Robert Haswell, was in the British Navy. On his way to becoming a rear admiral, he was getting a real reputation as a tyrant. So that would be young Haswell's role model as an officer. Haswell's parents never returned to America. That was the prevailing wisdom. But not every lead pans out. The deed was recorded in 1787, but it was signed in 1774. And late filed deeds aren't unusual this far back. It was just something to put off. But that's a little funny. This is a loyalist land was usually confiscated by the state. So maybe there was some deal. You backdate the deed, I'll get your son a commission on this groundbreaking voyage. So the thing is, you've got someone who starts off the voyage who had lost everything. And he's seen, he's surrounded by people who really made out pretty well. And has absolutely no experience. Did I mention this man used to do this kind of thing for a living? Finding people? This one he told me. It's pretty easy to find a dead person. They don't move. And here, he set it all up for us. Just like a classic storyteller. We don't know whether we can trust this kid or not. What's gonna happen once they leave Boston? I got millions of fans just watching how I flip this game. And when I'm walking down the street, I can hear you all screaming my name. I make the boys say, Wait.